Welcome to a lesson on the board account method of voting. In this lesson, we'll define the board account method, then determine winners of elections using the board account method. Board account is a voting method named after Jean Charles de Borda, who developed the system in 1770. In this method, points are assigned to candidates based upon their ranking, where candidates receive one point for last, two points for second to the last, and so on. So for example, if there were four choices, first choice votes would be worth four points, second choice votes worth three points, third choice votes worth two points, and finally the fourth choice votes would be worth one point. Then the points of the ballots are totaled and the candidate with the largest point total is the winner. Let's look at an example. Here's the preference table for a camping club that is deciding where to go on their next trip. Where A represents the arches, G represents the Grand Canyon, Y represents Yosemite, and Z equals Zion. Notice how we have four choices here, and therefore first place or first choice would receive four points, second place would receive three points, third place two points, and fourth place one point. Which means every vote in this first row would be worth four points, every vote in the second choice row is worth three points, and so on. So to find the total points, we'll set this up using a larger table. As we see here, again, all these first place votes here with four points each for each candidate, or in this case, each location. Just looking at this first row for a moment, notice how 12 voters voted Yosemite first. So Yosemite receives 12 times four, or 48 points. Looking at the second column here, notice how five voters voted the Grand Canyon first and therefore the Grand Canyon receives five times four, or 20 points. The second choice row here is worth three points for every vote. The third choice row is worth two points, and the fourth choice row is worth one point. So you may want to pause the video now just to verify that I did calculate these points correctly. Let's go ahead and find the total for each choice. Let's first find the points for the arches, so we'll look for all the A's. So in the first row we have an A here and here, the second row we have an A here, the third row we have an A here and here, and the fourth row we have an A here. So A receives 36 plus 24 plus 12 plus 10 plus 20 plus 12 points, or 114 points. Next we'll find the points for the Grand Canyon. So we'll find all of the G's. First row we have a G here, Second row, we have a G here. Third row, we have a G here, here, and here. And the fourth row, we have a G here. So the Grand Canyon receives 20 plus 30 plus 24 plus 8 plus 18 plus 6 points, or 106 points. Next for Yosemite, we have a Y here in the first row. Second row, we have a Y here and here. Third row we have a Y here, and fourth row we have a Y here and here. So Yosemite receives 48 plus 15 plus 27 plus 12 plus 4 plus 10 points, or 116 points. Then finally Zion is here in the first row and here. Second row we have a Z here and here. There are no Z's in the third row, but the fourth row we have a Z here and here. So Zion receives 16 plus 40 plus 36 plus 18 plus 5 plus 9 points, which is 124 points. And since Zion has the most points, under the board account method, Zion is the winner. Now let's talk about the flaw, or what's wrong with the board account method. One potential flaw of board account is a candidate could receive a majority of the first choice votes and still lose the election. To illustrate this, let's take a look at another example. Let's consider the following preference schedule. First notice in this election there are a total of 20 votes. And notice how candidate A receives 9 plus 2 or 11 of the 20 votes, which would be 55% or a majority win. Notice candidate B receives 8 first choice votes or 40% of the first choice votes, and candidate C only receives 1 or 5% of the first choice votes. 
So A would win by majority. But now let's find the winner of this election using the board account method. First, since there are three candidates, first choice votes are worth three points, second choice votes are worth two points, and third choice votes are worth one point. I didn't show as much work here, but notice how, looking at this first column, nine voters voted A first, so A receives nine times three, or 27 points. In this column, two voters voted A first, so A receives another two times three, or six points. Here, B is voted first by eight voters, so B receives eight times three, or 24 points, and so on. Every vote in the second row is worth two points, so B receives 18 points here, since nine times two is equal to 18, and so on. So now let's find the total number of points for each candidate. A receives 27 plus six plus eight plus one, or 42 points. Remember, A was the majority winner. But now if we take a look at candidate B, B receives 24 plus 18 plus two plus two points, which notice how it comes to 46 points. Notice how candidate B has more points in A, even though A is the majority winner. And then finally, candidate C receives three plus four plus 16 plus nine, or 32 points. So notice how again, B would win using board account. Which brings up another fairness criterion, the majority criterion. If a choice has a majority of first place votes, that choice should be the winner. Board account is sometimes described as a consensus-based voting system, since it can sometimes choose a more broadly acceptable option over one with majority support. This is a different approach than plurality, and instant runoff voting that focus on first choice votes. Board account considers voters' entire ranking to determine the outcome. Because of this consensus behavior, board account, or some variation of it, is commonly used in selecting sports awards. Variations are used to determine the most valuable player in baseball, to rank teams in the NCAA, and also to award the Heisman Trophy. I hope you found this helpful.